Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's take a look at the size of Mars relative to some other very known objects such as Earth, Venus, Mercury, and a few moons. It gives us a feeling of the size of Mars. So where's Mars? It's right here in the middle, kind of in the middle. And notice on the left we have the moon Ganymede, which is the largest moon in the solar system, one of the moons of Jupiter, and the largest moon meaning it's larger than the planet Mercury but not as large as Mars, so you can see the relative size. And then we have the other two larger terrestrial planets, Venus and Earth. So it gives you a relative view of how large these are. So even though Mars is a lot smaller than Earth, when we land on Mars, it's still enormous in size. There's a lot to be explored on Mars, and we'll see a lot of those geological features. Size-wise, we can say the diameter can be compared to the moons. Here we have the diameter of our moon, 3,476 kilometers, the diameter of the largest moon, Ganymede, then Mercury, 4,880 uh, kilometers, and then we have Mars, which is almost 7,000 kilometers. So it's significantly larger than Mercury and the largest moon, Ganymede. But relative to Venus and Earth, it is quite a bit smaller. It is a little bit more than 50% the diameter of Earth and about 60% the diameter of Venus. So you can see that Compared to those two larger terrestrial planets, Mars is relatively small. Part of the reason why Mars became what it is, if Mars had just been bigger, it would have been probably very much like Earth today with oceans and rivers and lakes, a nice thick atmosphere. But because Mars was rel relatively small, it was not able to hang on to its atmosphere. And that is why there's no longer any liquid water on the surface. Mass-wise, you can see that the Moon is barely 1% the mass of the Earth. It's about 1 to an 80 ratio. But Ganymede is about twice as large as the Moon in mass, and Mercury is about twice as large in mass compared to Ganymede. And then Mars is about twice as big in size, mass-wise, compared to Mercury. So mass-wise, um, Mars is about twice the size of Mercury, but then compared to the Earth, it's only about 10% the mass of Mercury. And also the density of Mars is much smaller, so even though it only has about a little over half the, the diameter of Earth, it's only about 10% the mass because the density of Earth is quite a bit larger than the density of Mars. To give another perspective on that, the area of Mars is about 15 times the area of the United States. Now the United States is a very big country, but Mars is 15 times the size of that. Compared to that, the area of the Earth is about 55 times the area of the United States. So the United States takes up about 2% the total area, surface area of the Earth. So yes, if you're going to explore Mars, imagine exploring a surface area that's 15 times the size of the United States. Even exploring the United States by car would take you many months, of course, to look at all the various geological features. Imagine to explore all of the surface of Mars. It would take you quite a long time because even though it is a relatively small planet in our solar system, it is still a large area to be explored. Here we have a nice mosaic of the different planets in the solar system, of course, and not according to size. Obviously, Jupiter is way, way bigger than Mars. So here we have Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, the four terrestrial planets with our moon. Then we have the four gas planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And just take a look at that. I think the picture itself is just absolutely amazing. Every single planet looks so different from every other planet. Perhaps the only two planets that look somewhat similar to each other, and they're fairly similar in size, may be Uranus and Neptune, although there's still a significant difference in the coloration of the planet and the visibility of clouds in the atmosphere versus nothing in Uranus. So it is quite amazing. We have this enormous mosaic of planets, and Mars by itself is very, very different compared to all the other planets in the solar system, as you can tell. So we'll explore Mars some more, but now at least you have a feel for the size of the planet compared to everything else in the solar system. And that is how we know. So if Venus and Mars switch places, would that be uh, interesting? If Venus and Mars were to switch places, hmm. Well, you're talking about in location or in size? Location. location. So what would happen if Mars was at the location of Venus? Well, that much closer to the sun, it would even have less atmosphere. 
The only reason why Mars still has somewhat of an atmosphere is because it's far away from the, from the Sun and it's able to hold on to some of it. The closer you get to the Sun, the larger the planet needs to be in order to hang on to its atmosphere. So it would not be much of a help. I'm not talking about Mars, I'm talking about life. There could be lakes and rivers and all that good stuff in, on Venus. Ah, you mean if you put Venus, yes, now there you go, in the other direction, if you were to put Venus in the location of Mars, then yes, you would have much more of an Earth-like planet, perhaps with blue oceans and clouds and you name it. Uh, yes, it's unfortunate. I feel very sad about the fact that Mars is as small as it is. It just... <laughs> <laughs> it was just a little bit bigger. We would have such a different planet. We'll just have to take it for what it is. Okay, uh, what made Venus atmosphere the way it is? Not talking about the thickness, but the um, composition. The composition? Well, for probably the same reason that Mars has roughly the same composition. We'll talk about that a little bit more. But both Mars and Venus, more than 95% of the atmosphere is carbon dioxide but for somewhat the same and somewhat different reasons. One of the reasons why there is so much carbon dioxide is because once upon a time there may have been oceans both on Mars and Venus that for different reasons have evaporated, have disappeared off the surface of the planet, leaving behind the carbon dioxide that was probably uh, mixed in with the water, right? So, uh, there's a lot of absorbance of carbon dioxide with the oceans, the same with Earth. Earth has way more carbon dioxide in the oceans than it does in the atmosphere, probably somewhere in the order of 700 to 1. And uh, therefore, once the oceans are gone, the carbon dioxide ends up in the atmosphere. And that may be one of the big reasons why both Mars and Venus have such a large amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So if Venus was in the place of Mars, there could be oxygen in Venus' atmosphere if the, if the water so if Venus had been where Mars was, you would first of all not have as much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and potentially more oxygen. Now, of course, Earth's oxygen by and large came from plant life and photosynthesis. So unless you have that kind of environment where life exists and oxygen could be generated by that photosynthesis process, you may not have a lot of oxygen in the atmosphere. So we are very lucky that there is plant life with photosynthesis that provides the oxygen in the atmosphere. All good questions, but yeah, it is a little sad that Mars didn't quite make it as a Earth-like planet. It would be nice. Some, some place to go and visit for vacation, for example. Uh, we'll probably be at war with each other. <laughs> yeah, but like in the science fiction movies, yeah. we'd be at war with each other. Yeah, that might not work well either. <laughs>